So good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of how we've gone with mobility, the twists and the turns in our organisation, and it has certainly been quite a roller coaster ride over the years. To kick things off, I thought the easy way to show you how it kind of really unfolded was obviously a bit of history. Certainly before 2000, early 2000s, we were predominantly made up of PDAs, um, basic mobile phones, and as well as connectivity through PC suites. Uh, certainly in around 2003 with the introduction and, and connectivity through more um, PDAs, Exchange Active Sync, and the introduction of BlackBerry Enterprise Server. BlackBerry was predominantly our device of choice uh, around 2006. The, the, certainly the keyboard, the blinking light gave them the, the power and the, certainly the passion behind those phones. The market landscape in terms of sales around the early 2007 was made up of Windows, um, certainly BlackBerry was growing and becoming a market leader and Symbian phones were certainly um, prevalent around the world. However, the game changed in um, late 2007 with the introduction of the iPhone. Um, certainly a big ga game changer in regards to its usability and its simplicity. Also, 2008, the introduction of the Apple App Store, the Android OS and uh, applications such as Dropbox in the Apple App Store. And by this time, within two years, the market changed greatly. Um, Windows was on a slight decline. BlackBerry was probably at its peak, around 21% of the market share. Um, Symbian Devices was losing some market share, and iOS really grabbing a lot of it. 2010 was quite a, probably the writing was on the wall, um, is how we saw it. Certainly, um, the Apple App Store was winning all the developers in the world. By, by then, it was 185,000 applications in the App Store. Um, the iPad was introduced, followed by the Samsung Galaxy Tab, as well as um, another introduction of Android. The iteration and the rapid introduction of technologies was really, really quick. Then we found the iCloud, Android, another Android release, and Nokia Lumia came up, and that was the first introduction of what the, you know, the Nokia and Microsoft relationship was going to be. By then, half a million iPhone and app, um, iPad applications. This year already, we've uh, seen a big decline in Windows. BlackBerry is on a bit of a demise now there as well. It's likewise with Symbian and the market being made off of the Apple, iOS, as well as Android. Already we've seen the iPad released, Google Drive, Galaxy S3, and the talk of the Windows Mobile and RT device um, soon to be released. By then, we had already uh, six, well, by now I should say, 650,000 applications in the App Store. Uh, Apple claims 400 million active users with credit cards purchasing continuously. And over that short period of time, 30 billion downloads. So in summary, what I'm trying to say here is obviously the technology was rapid. It was really quick and compared to the past, which was a lot slower, the innovation and the release of technology is you know, really quick. But really, what did it do for me? It's not me, on a bad day maybe. It, it gave me a headache. Um, you know, we had other priorities, but there was a big headache. But really, where did the headache really come from? Well, a specific apple fell on my head. Um, really, well, these were thrown at me um, back in 2007 pretty quickly. But why the headache? A whole lot of things came in a lot of direction all at once with the popularity and simplicity of these devices. There was questions on how we purchase applications, which applications, how we deploy them. Can I access our business applications and the manufacturing, our ERP systems? Where do I put my files? Where can I, how do I access my files? Um, all these things. And we already, already started seeing our files go out in these um, syncing systems, such as the iCloud or Dropbox and the likes, um, you know, overnight at an instant. How do I access my learning and management system, which was in our organization made up in Flash um, and no longer worked? How do I do, deal with that app store? Do I create my own account? Should I purchase my credit card? Do I get a, re, you know, a reimbursement from the organization? Or do I use the work credit card? Being made of a lot of engineers in our organization, there was jailbroken devices in terms of um, them bringing their own and wanting to access co um, corporate systems. And the big drive and the popularity of these devices you know, drove the consumerization and BYOD movement. So very early on, we made some decisions, and some of them were good decisions, some of them not so good, but we had to put a stake in the ground and realize we wanted to adopt them, see what benefit we can get out of them. Um, early on, we, we said freeze the crowd um, at a time of you know, exchange rates really strong and, and, and cost concerns as well. Having a laptop, smartphone, and a tablet was costly to the organization in terms of procurement and supporting. 
So we focused on you know, those with a laptop and a smartphone, and then another segment of smartphone and a tablet. Um, this, obviously, the laptop side were content creators and looked at a population of also then content consumers with the tablet. We did data classification. Um, we need to know what was critical in the organization. So rather than focusing on protecting everything and being overzealous with security, we really needed to know what our IP was and protecting really that strongly. And the rest were you know, still levels of security but being not overcautious with it. For a few focus group and discussions throughout the organization, we focused on um, the sales force, the learning and development team, what we could use these devices in the shop floor, and also in trade shows. We also focused on creating Fisher & Paykel healthcare applications in the App Store, um, and we're you know, due to release those as well. So focusing on one where you can take a photo of yourself, it helps you fit a mask on your face in terms of our medical devices and also patient management systems. And we up front said we're, we are very interested in BYOD and how can we deliver that to the organization. We did a lot of trials and we're still doing trials and getting a lot of feedback. We, we felt that you know, we had to get involved, understand, get ourselves exposure um, and learn from it. In terms of understanding our data, we had an independent party come in, um, do a security review, looked at the impact and the risk of actually data loss and exposure. We focused on two tracks, one being the BYOD side and the other being on corporate devices. In terms of BYOD, we uh, released a policy focusing on guiding principles, policies, and good judgment around how you protect your personal data, but also the corporate data that may exist on it. We introduced a BYOD Wi-Fi within the corporate environment, providing them access to the internet um, to get positive buy-in, plus also what we um, introduced was an internal web dev server. So that server sat in a DMZ, enabling them to connect to, from the corporate um, to, and, and sync files to the web dev, and then the web dev sync to their devices. That, kind of a, you know, that focus allowed us to provide a service to them, which they used instead of introducing their own services, which we didn't know of. Also, Exchange Active Sync provides, provided enough security um, to manage and, and wipe the devices if we need to. In terms of corporate devices, we focused on those same four things, but in addition, we looked at cloud file syncing services such as Dropbox and Box. Um, we've been trialing and using Box and, and finding pretty you know, good things about that. Things in regards to being able to time bomb files, to better sync files if they're out of date on these devices um, and have them automatically sync from the, the central server. And in terms of MDM, mobile device management, um, we felt that those we needed to be provide specific functionality on the corporate devices. In terms of the applications and, and devices, they are fantastic, and we've seen great benefits with them. Um, what, you know, one side of th is our, our standard configuration that we're deploying in, in terms of applications. They cost less than sixty dollars in terms of the entire application, the whole the suite, um, and there's no really ongoing maintenance with these, which is you know really cost effective. The other great thing is a lot of our vendors who, and suppliers who help to, you know, provide services in our corporate environment are extending their functionality out to these devices. So the likes of our you know, Juniper networking and Shortel telephony, um, they're extending their function out there as well, which is a great benefit for us. In terms of what do we learn and what, you know, what do we try and do and what do we learn? In terms of mobile device management, we actually assessed quite a number of them and trialed a number of them as well. So in terms of enterprise, Exchange ActiveSync, sorry, Good, Zenprise, Sybase, McAfee, AirWatch, Mobile Iron, um, we looked at them. In summary, there's certainly greater value than what Exchange ActiveSync, and they provide more functionality, um, but we felt that it's still not ma that mature in terms of our organizational needs. Some of the on-premise solutions that um, we tried, um, they weren't easy to implement. Um, one in particular, they couldn't get going at all. And talking through a number of colleagues and out in the industry, they too had the same challenges. In terms of um, number of devices per individual, a lot of these systems provisioned in regards to a user basis. So you, you give permission to a user, but then the number of devices they, they can actually um, you know, provision themselves is unlimited. Um, you lose control of really what devices are out there, where data going, is going again. So that was a bit of a limitation. In regards to data and application management, the MDM, they provide a good functionality in terms of selective wiping, um, full wiping of devices, and also limiting applications in terms of where they could sync. But they didn't provide those functionalities such as actually getting corporate data to the devices in a nice manner, time bombing files so they, they, you know, they did expire after a period of time, and as well as 
um, keeping the files sync in sync uh, to the latest versions. In terms of application management, it's quite an interesting challenge here because um, talking Apple in particular that we've been really looking at, in the US they provide good actual application management, but it's not, just, it's not available in New Zealand at this stage. So in terms of actual volume purchasing, you can actually purchase a volume of applications and then have redemption codes and deploy them through MDM. Um, in the rumor mill, I hear that it is coming to New Zealand soon, so you can actually do that. And the other challenge is, is that they, they wait for MDM providers to actually provide this functionality. So it's exposed by Apple, but yet the MDM providers have to adopt them and release them as well. So that's a, another point of, you know, not, they're not quite mature enough. One finding is cloud-based MDM. They're, they're pretty good. They certainly um, helped us get started quickly, assessing the solutions and actually learning from them as well. We also tried a number of virtual desktop solutions to see how we could uh, expose corporate systems to mobile devices. Unfortunately for us, we didn't find it that suitable for our needs. Um, in terms of, we tried Citrix and VMware View. It, they, they're great solutions, and they actually worked functionally. The challenge actually was that it was that simply the operating system and the applications through like Windows on a touch device simply wasn't that suitable. Um, the users in regard felt that the touch usability as well as the on-screen keyboard using a traditional desktop um, wasn't that functional. And we, we felt you know, if they didn't have buy-in into it, they didn't like it, they didn't quite understand it, they weren't going to use it. So that's our situation at the moment. So in terms of some benefits, we, we are targeting some cost savings. Um, we haven't fully gained them yet, but we believe we will get there, primarily around the print and the media and marketing material. We spend millions a year creating marketing material, distributing it around the world, but then they get out of date. So in regards to going more electronic, um, having more on-demand print um, for our sales force, um, that was an opportunity there. Improved sales process. So in terms of medical device um, sales, you've got a small window of opportunity to actually engage with the doctors or nurses. And having a you know, multimedia feature-rich device, handing it over to a doctor in a small you know, window, um, really sent the message in terms of our therapies, our medical devices, and what could it do. So that was a great improvement there. Increased application utilization. In terms of our CRM, our um, learning and development, our manu manufacturing shop floor, floor technologies, we saw an increase in uptake on actually utilizing the applications we already provided. I guess it was, you know, the feedback is the simplicity of the device, also the instant on nature um, really helped. Increased productivity, so the usual thing of you know, using these devices in between meetings, walking down the whole hallway, um, we saw productivity increase there. And also employee engagement through BYOD. The, the users are passionate about these devices, um, and they, they love them, and they really appreciate to be able to personalize their devices, but also use it for work. The interesting thing we found is certainly there's a population which is uh, very positive about this, but then we've still got a population which isn't so interested, and they've still got the mindset that the business needs to provide these devices. So we've got to face that challenge as well. In terms of in summary, um, it's a good opportunity at the moment, we've, we found. Certainly the innovation, the rapid increase of technology continues. Um, I'm not you know, advocating any of these specific ones, but in terms of our dealings with them, they've been you know, open to, to us and listened to our requirements. Um, at times, they've determined some workarounds to achieve our requirements, or their product, they've released products with them included, as well as um, putting them in product development roadmap. So certainly the message to all of us, I think it's a great opportunity. Um, I think it is getting easier, um, and if you have specific requirements, I think that's a great time whilst the development is happening fast, not that I see it slowing down. That's it, thank you.